Okay, our next speaker this afternoon is Tom Coleman. Tom works for the USCA Forest Service and uh, in, in this area, and uh, he's going to talk about composting and firewood. Tom. Thank you. Um, as Tim mentioned, I'm really going to touch on uh, some of the options for managing infested material. And luckily, we do have quite a bit, bit of experience in Southern California so far with invasive species. We've kind of run the, the gamut of uh, management options with the gold spotted oak borer and really kind of tying that in with education and outreach. Um, also within Forest Health Protection, we've tried to kind of get ahead of the game and really develop best management practices for the National Forest Force. So something like the tee shot board comes into town, it gets up on the National Forest. We already have some of these protocols that the National Forest has accepted for managing wood. And, and it, a lot of this is some of the stuff that I'll go over. So as I said, quite a few options. We'll kind of go over a little bit of the pros and cons for some of these options. Some are better for larger scale situations, some more for private landowners. Um, the one thing is, is Tim mentioned with a lot of this research, none of this has been specifically tested on tee shot bore here in California. There's a little bit of work to speak of in uh, Sri Lanka and some other work with ambrosia beetles, but none of it's here. And when I start thinking about these control options, really people all assume that you are going to control every bit of the population. That's not the case with some of these, but it's really what are you willing to accept as a control measure? Do you want 100% control or do you want 80 or do you want 50%? Um, but just think that, that it's really kind of this risk associated with some of these treatments. One might give you complete eradication, but it's gonna be very expensive. And again, we'll talk a little bit about the limiting of the movement of infested material. One off, a lot of people confuse grinding and chipping as the same treatment. So if you think of grinding kind of like maybe like a, a, a carrot shaver, that's grinding. Uh, chipping is if you're cutting celery, something straight up and straight down. Really different types of treatments. Um, so you're going to grind this material and preferably leave it on site or away from host trees in case there is any kind of leftover. This is typically done with tub grinders. Uh, we really got it in this game because gold spotted oak borer is killing very large diameter wood and this is not going to fit in your regular size chipper. So very dense wood, large wood, you had to turn to tub grinders. Maybe not going to be the complete the case with tee shot hole bore just because the size of invest material varies quite a bit. But sometimes it's more blim, sometimes it's part of the bowl. So this is an option, but this is really kind of more of an option um, for those larger scale treatments. And, and what we're expecting with grinding is really mechanical injury to the beetle. You can reduce the size of the host matter. You may speed up the process of drying, uh, which can eventually co control the population. As Tim mentioned, um, when you just say grinding, that's uh, not good enough. There are many sizes you can talk about grind. We've looked at nine, two, three, and one minus. That just kind of runs the scale there. Um, of course, for gold spotted oak borer, it's a little bit bigger than this insect, but generally you're gonna get some pretty good results with grinding. I, I don't expect that you're gonna have too much of a problem. Um, but really is, it's trying to utilize this material, um, trying to recoup some of your expensive if you start to bring in this big bad boy and shovel out the money for that, you maybe want to try to make up some of your money. Um, and that's really where the problem comes in. Um, so you can use a lot of this for mulching or composting. Everybody would like this material and everybody wants you to bring it to them. So that's the problem. It's really the transportation aspect of it. Um, and then again, if you bring this big bohemoth thing in, you need a large enough area where it's not shooting wood onto somebody's house. Um, so this is again, very large scale treatment. So our, our friends from Huntington Garden or LA Arboretum, when you get enough material, this might be the way to go. Um, and another thing with the transportation to really make it effective, people want steady supply of this. So they may come and treat once, but they wanna know that they're gonna keep getting more and more and more if, if they're gonna work with this management. So chipping, so again, chipping and leave the material on site. Uh, this is really good for a lot of your smaller diameter trees or material, so the upper branches and maybe some avocado or some of these other landscape trees, uh, very good. And again, with grinding, um, we again, we don't really have too much data with a lot of these species. Most of all this work with management has been, of course, invasive. So emerald ash borer, Asian longhorn beetle, the work we've done with gold spotted oak borer, and we just heard this week there's been some work with chipping and red bay ambrosia beetle in Florida with Jason Smith's lab and very effective. And that's amazing because there's 
a lot of anecdotal evidence out there flying around saying, oh, chipping works, but there's not much really research to support it. Um, and as I mentioned before, they are using this in Sri Lanka for uh, pruning their branches on tea. So at least there is a little bit of evidence with some of these really smaller beetles that chipping is effective. And this is good because more importantly for the private industry, this is likely what they're gonna use. Or if the city is gonna be taking down branches or trees, they're gonna to turn to the chippers that they already have. So that, that's probably one of the main ways we can deal with our infested material. Uh, so again, small quantities of wood. You don't have to call in somebody from Corona or whoever has the grinding. A lot of these chippers are available. Some arborists already have them. Um, and again, probably just as effective as grinding treatments. Something else that's out there, tarping and closing infested material. This is a type of a solarization. Uh, this is really used more for your private landowner. So if somebody loses an avocado tree in their yard, they don't want to pay for having a chipper to come, maybe you can tarp it and close the beetles. Um, typically what we go with is um, this kind of clear plastic tarp. You really want that solar radi radiation to get down to the wood. Um, you think that in our Southern, Cali sun, Southern California sun, this would be very effective. With some of our work, it'll get 150 degrees under there and the beetles will still pop out. With the ambrosia beetle, it, it might be a little bit more complicated. So it does trap moisture under there, but maybe it can dry the wood out enough, or maybe it'll be too moist, who knows? So that's something that really needs to be tested out. But UV plastic is usually suggested. There's some other work that we've kind of promoted using aluminum screen just because it lasts longer. Uh, some work with emerald ash borer, just really double bagging it. Um, basically the same thing and, and much easier, but again, very small quantities of wood. Something else, well this is the easy one, well you just leave it on site. Um, again, this is kind of, you really want to pull it away from your host trees. Tim talked about somebody gets wood and they throw it up under their tree and their tree dies. Um, this is kind of a, a best management practice, pulling your wood away from some of these areas. What we don't know is when you fell a tree and you buck it up and kind of reduce it in size, how long is the beetle going to stay in there? How long is this material going to be um, able to hold the brooding population? So that we don't know. Is it three months? Is it a year? Is it a couple of years? Really, how quickly will it dry out? Um, but this is kind of the, you know, if you have to move it, please let it sit long enough. Some of the additional management options, uh, heat treatment. Uh, you don't hear about this much because really the equipment is not available to the public. It's not really available to much of us. Um, but there's some pretty good guidelines. Most of this is really comes from a lot of the international trade. Uh, Animal Plant Health Inspection has a guideline for 160 degrees for 75 minutes and you can pretty much eradicate your population just baking it long enough. But again, homeowner, city, this is, isn't really an option just because this equipment's not around. Same thing with the fumigation. A uh, little bit of work with sulfur furide and methyl bromide. Um, I guess we all try to use uh, chemicals, pesticides as, as infrequent as we can, but this is an option. And most of these, didn't say it, these are all insect vector controlling management options. But with some of these, with I think it's methyl bromide, they have used it with oak wilt, uh, I believe in Texas for control of uh, the actual pathogen. But probably not gonna see much use of either heat treatment or fumigation. And then the easy one, burn it. Of course, um, not just talking about your little pile of wood burning in your yard, of course that's not gonna happen in the urban areas too often, but really these curtain burners. We've talked with the state about some of these larger equipments they have of, of burning this infested material. Thank you. So when you start talking about infested material, what everybody will be glad to do and help you with is education and outreach. Education and outreach, education and outreach. If you look very close at the bottom there, if you wanna mention the Q word, Quarantine or zone of infestation, that's a whole nother ball game. But people are more than help, happy to help you with education and outreach. Um, there is a group in California called the California Firewood Task Force, uh, really set up out of a resolution in 2010 from our California Forest Pest Council from some of these other issues that are out there. Basically, here is some, that wasn't two minutes. Here is some of our information 
Emerald ash borer, sudden oak death, pitch canker, gold spotted oak borer, I, I can't read that, but really trying to adopt their message. This was something that was brought up uh, in our other meeting. And really, a lot of these groups are already involved. It's really just taking their message and run with it. Also, the same with Don't Move Firewood. On the left, they had made some nice little uh, posters for us for gold spotted oak borer. On the right is sudden oak death taking their materials, taking their media experience, and really just adopting their message and, and their avenues for getting it out there. So that's something that we really need to do um, as kind of this regulatory group to, to get that information out to these sources. Just to briefly touch on quarantine and some of the hurdles that you're gonna deal with, because people will bring it up. Um, right now, we don't really know uh, really where the infestation is. The Keith's got a lot of good data, but there certainly needs to be a lot more ground surveys or trapping. You need support from federal, state, and county agencies. And it's not just, yes, we support you, it, it's dollars too. And, and a lot of that isn't really coming in. Of course, it's, it's just our budget climate. You need APHIS on board, California Food Nag, and the County Ag Commissioners. This is what we run to with Gold Spot at Oak Borer. Everybody has to want this solution for this to, to work out. So when you start talking about the natural landscape, you think of the Board of Forestry, maybe you don't, but they're also another agency. You're likely not gonna get too much support from the Board of Forestry just because these hardwoods are not a reg regulated wood product. So unless it starts killing pine, don't expect the Board of Forestry to kind of come in board. They might eventually come in later on, we've seen that with Gold Spotted Oak Borer. So if you do wanna get a quarantine, then it's who, the pointing fingers. Who enforces the quarantine? How will you enforce it? And then when you do actually pull somebody over who has infested material, what are you gonna do with the infested wood? So it's a big, nasty process. That's why everybody's very good about education and outreach. So don't move firewood. Thank you.